the first step in making the mud kitchen is to get the legs cut. Now I'm going to be using some C16 material for this. This measures 38 mil thick by 63 mil wide. This isn't critical though, you could go with any size material you like. I just think some nice chunky legs will set this off brilliantly. So for the front legs, I'm going to need two legs cut to 50 centimetres long. And for the back legs, I'm going to need two legs cut to one metre long. And I'm going to cut those out just with a handsaw. <laughs> For the rest of the construction of the mud kitchen, I'm going to be using decking boards, mainly because it's ideal for outside, but it's a really nice material to work with. And I do really like some of the detailing you get on some of the boards as well. So the first pieces that I'm going to be cutting, I'm going to be used to join the front and back legs together. So this is how the leg construction is basically going to go. We've got the front leg, and we've got the back leg. So we're gonna use a piece of the decking. I'm gonna put this side facing out. And the top part is gonna be flush with the front leg, which is slightly shorter, and then just flush at the back on the back leg. This bottom piece isn't gonna sit directly on the bottom. I want it to sit up a little bit, just to give it a little couple of bum feet. And to make sure I've got that pretty much the same measurement, I'm gonna use a scrap block of wood. So I'll just make sure that that's flush at the bottom on that side and at the back, make sure it's flush either side. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'll be able to drill some pilot holes and add some screws. I'll only add one screw per side first, make sure it's still all square, and then come back and add a second just to lock it all in place. And I can check that it's square simply by measuring corner to corner. And as long as those two measurements match, you know that it's square. If it's not square, while you've just got one screw in each side, you can rack it a little bit. So there is some wiggle room. Now that I'm gonna lock it in place with one more screw per board, it won't move on me then and it will remain square. Now that we've got the two side pieces done, it's already kind of taking shape. We got our two end pieces, now we just need some pieces to join them together. I'm gonna to go with 90 centimetres long. It's a pretty decent size for a mud kitchen, but the reason I'm going with 90 centimetres is because the decking boards that I've got measure 1.8 metres long. So out of one decking board, I'll be able to get two pieces. So again, just like we did on the side pieces, these are first gonna get attached with a single screw on either end. That way I've still got some wiggle room to make sure it's all nice and square. It'd help if I had it the right way around first. Now I can add two strips to the back and that'll finish off the main frame to the mud kitchen. So now that the main frame work's done, I can turn my attention to getting the worktop put together. And again, this is just decking boards that I'm cut to 90 centimetres long and I'm gonna do it all the way across. I think it's gonna work out at roughly four boards wide, but as you can see, when I get to the back at the top here, I need to cut out so it can slot around the legs. Before I get it all fixed in place, I first want to add a couple extra battens. I'm going to be using the exact same material that I used to make the legs, and I'm just going to mark the length so it can fit in between the cross pieces of decking. I need two of these pieces, and what these will do they'll offer support for where the washing up bowl is going to be, which will actually be the fake sink. So with the bowl roughly sitting in place, making sure that it's pretty much centered in between the two battens, I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to trace around the outer perimeter of the lift just onto this back piece so I can get it roughly positioned back in place, upside down. Then I'll be able to sit in a couple of scrap pieces underneath and use those to mark where I need to cut to be able to get it to fit onto the edge. Now as long as I cut slightly inside 
at that mark, the lip of the bowl should rest on the edge and hold it in place. You can get those cut with the jigsaw. So now with those pieces cut, I'll be able to get them fixed into place, again, just using screws. The last few pieces I'm going to be adding are to form a kind of backboard to the mud kitchen. And again, I'm just using decking for this and securing it in place with a couple of screws. Now that I've got the kind of back panel and the top shelf added, I've flipped it over and this is the underside now. And I've gone ahead and I've cut some scrap pieces just to length so they'll fit in between the two cross rails. I'm going to secure these in place just by drilling a couple of pilot holes and adding a couple of screws from both sides. And this will act as a little bit of a storage tray. You don't have to worry about taking too much weight. I can't see it having anything heavy put underneath. So a couple of screws through will be plenty strong enough. I'm literally just going to lay them out evenly, forming a bit of a bottom shelf. Before I start adding on some of the decorative details, I'm first going to go around and sand all the sharp edges just to make sure that they're rounded over a little bit and nice and smooth. I'm also going to concentrate on the corners because of course the last thing you want is any sharp corners sticking out. So going over with some sandpaper should smooth it out nicely. So I've got the edges and corners all sanded smooth. Now I can look at actually doing the stove top. Now I did ask a few of the Honour Budget members what their thoughts would be on if I should cut out rings to represent the hob, but if I did that it would mean that this surface would no longer be flat. The other option is to just trace around some circles and paint them on instead. That way you get to keep a nice flat surface, so if you wanted to use it for anything else you can do. That seemed to be the most popular option, so that's what I'm going to be doing. To make the fake knobs for the front of the cooker, I'm going to be using some dowel rod. Now this dowel is actually left over from a file project I did not too long ago. I attempted to try and make a concrete stool in a bucket. It didn't really go to plan, but it means I've got some of this left over. So I'm going to chop it up into little sections and then I'll be able to attach it to the front once they're painted. And it should look like knobs on the front of a stove. I think you're gonna like this method for how I'm actually gonna make the knobs. So we've got the piece of dowel cut off. First thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole as close to center as I can get it. And that hole goes all the way through. Do the same to the others. Next, I'm gonna attach a screw right the way through that hole as well. You wanna make sure it goes through the other side. So now we've got the screw through poking out on the other side, I can secure that screw into the chuck of the drill. So if I tighten the drill up onto this, I'll be able to spin the dowel and sand the edges nice and round really quickly. This trick also helps to speed up painting them too. The last thing to add are a few hooks so we can hang up some utensils. And here's the mud kitchen finished. I think you'll agree it's another simple project just in time for the kids to break up from school. You can really get this made over a weekend and of course decorate it however you like. I've left this pretty much the bare wood. I've got the painted stove tops and the knobs at the front just to add a little bit of detailing but this could be as bright colours as you like, add some patterns, really go to town with it. This is going to make a great little play area and a bit of a storage unit as well. So I hope you give it a go. If you do give it a go, let us know in the comments down below. And if you post any pictures on social media, be sure to tag on a budget in on because we absolutely love to see what you get up to. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching. It's just the right type for me, you know. <laughs>